I'm going to start the video uh, with a little experiment um, to kind of introduce the idea of hypothesis testing. So because um, usually hypothesis testing can be really challenging and kind of trying to figure out what exactly are we doing uh, can be a little hard. So um, I'm going to just go ahead and, and give you kind of a little example of what what exactly we're going to be calculating in this in this section. So let's say we start off with 52 cards, so a card deck. So if you're familiar with the card deck, the cards, uh, you usually have 52 cards. Um, half of these cards are black. Half are black. Okay. And the other half are red. Okay. So uh, usually, um, if you have 52 cards, half of them are going to be black, half of them are going to be red. Um, and if we were to say, well, I want to know what the proportion of red cards are. Okay. So what percent of cards are red? Okay. Well, that's basic because you just know that half of them are red. So you can just say this is going to be 50%. Okay, so usually since we've just talked about proportions, we know that the proportion of red cards is going to be 0.5. So P equals 0.5. Okay, so it's 50 50. Um, so now what we're going to do is let's say I have this brand new deck that I just bought. So we have this brand new deck of cards. Okay, so we have this deck. So here's my deck of cards. Okay, it's freshly opened. Okay. Um, so I opened it. Okay. Open. Okay. I opened the deck of cards and I'm not going to look at them. Okay. So I'm not going to look at the cards, but I want to know, do we really believe that this newly, uh, open deck is going to have 50 red cards and 50 black cards? Now this sounds pretty dumb because you can just look at the cards, but let's just say we're not going to look at them. We're just going to try to experiment. Is this really true? Is Or did maybe the company make a mistake? Maybe I might have gotten one less black card or maybe I got, would have gotten one less red card. So we're not sure. So the way that we're going to do it is we're going to experiment. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, choose one card at a time. Uh, with replacement okay so I'm gonna choose one card I'm gonna grab it I'm gonna look at it and I'm gonna tally what I get so once I got this card I'm gonna go ahead and put it back reshuffle and get another card okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tally uh, the black cards the number of black cards that I get and I'm also gonna tally the number of red cards that I'm gonna get okay so now keep in mind that we are under the assumption that the deck is 50 50. Okay. We have 50 black cards. I'm not 50. We have 50% of them being black cards and 50% of them being, being red cards. Okay. So that's the assumption that we have. Okay. So let's see if they messed up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a deck and I'm going to grab a first card. Okay. I grab my card. I, I shuffled it and I grabbed my first card. And I get a black card. Okay. So I get one black card. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back into the deck and reshuffle it. So are you still convinced that this is 50%? Well, yeah, right. Because we just pulled one card out and we put it back and we shuffled it and then that was it. Okay. So we're not it still might be 50 50. So I'm going to go ahead and, and reshuffle it. I'm going to grab another card and I get another black card. So are you convinced now that it's still 50 50? Okay. Well, I got two black cards in a row that can probably occur. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it back in the deck and I'm going to shuffle it and grab another card. And now I get another black card. Hmm. I don't know. Okay. So we got another black card. You might be convinced, you might not, okay, it really just depends. So I'm going to go ahead and do it again, put it back, and I get another black card. 
Okay, so at this point, maybe you're a little skeptical. You're like, okay, why did we get four black cards in a row? Okay, I should only get, you know, I, a red should be coming up. So I do it again, and I redraw, I shuffle, and I redraw, and I get another black card. Okay, now at this point, many of you are now skeptical. Now you might be thinking, okay, I got five black cards in a row. Do you still think that this is 50-50? Well, at that point, you might be thinking, no, I don't think so. Maybe my deck is all full of black cards. Or maybe there's only uh, 51 black cards and only one red card. I don't know. Okay, so you can do this many different times. And unless you look at the deck, you won't really figure out what exactly is going on. Okay, so you keep tallying and you just end up getting a whole bunch of black cards. Okay, so at some point, you're going to have enough data that you collected to show that this actually is not true. The assumption that we said in the very beginning is not true. So that's the whole point of hypothesis testing. We are consistently collecting data to determine whether something is going to be true or not. So this amount, grabbing black cards or grabbing a, a random card and then replacing it, reshuffling and continuing doing the same process is basically collecting the data and we're collecting enough data to determine is this possible? So is this thing possible? Is this data possible, okay, based on this point 0.5, okay, that's basically what the whole point of hypothesis testing is. I want to prove, is this guy true? If it's not true, I'm going to first go ahead and collect some data, and based on that data, if this data shows, hey, I don't think this is going to be possible, given this truth, I can go ahead and say, well, this is not going to be true. Okay, so what we just did is what we call hypothesis testing. Okay, we're kind of having a hypothesis in the very beginning, and then we're going to determine whether it's going to be true or not. Okay, so let me give you a couple of definitions. Okay, so the first thing that you kind of want to do when you do this um, a hypothesis test is, is figure out what your null no, no hypothesis is. And your null hypothesis is what we're going to call HO. Okay. And I know a null hypothesis is what we call a, is basically a hypothesis to be tested. Okay. So you just have a hypothesis to be tested. Okay. And usually these null hypotheses, at least in this class, usually. Um, has an equal sign. So in this class, all of our null hypotheses are going to have equal signs. Now, there are some null hypotheses that actually have a greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. We're not going to talk about those. We're just going to say that they're equal to. So the way that you write, and here's some notation that you want to make sure that you know, uh, you whenever you're writing a null hypothesis, this is what we're going to say. H0, put a, col a, col a colon there. Okay, you're going to write the parameter. So you're going to write the parameter equals a number. That's basically how you, the setup of it. So if I wanted to write the null hypothesis, so let's just say write the null hypothesis. For the card problem that we just did, this is how you're going to write it. So write the null hypothesis for the card problem that we just did. Well, the card problem, we had our parameter, in this case our parameter was p, is equal to the number 0.5. So the way that we're going to write it is h0 colon, the parameter in this case is p, is equal to 0.5. This is how you write it, just like this. Okay, not h0 equals 0.5. This is just how you want to write it. Always, always, always. So make sure that you remember that. Okay, that is my null hypothesis. So this is kind of like you can think of the plaintiff. Okay, this is what we're trying to test. Okay, is this true or is it not true? Okay, now, um, just like we have a 
plaintiff, we should also have like a defendant, okay? Like if you think about it in trials, okay? So n now what we're gonna have is an alternative hypothesis. And we're gonna call this HA. Okay, and basically this is just a hypothesis to be tested, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> not to be tested, to be considered <laughs> as an alternative to the null, okay? So basically, it's just an alternative to the null, okay? And then the way that we write this is going to be the following way. So here's the notation again. Instead of HO, we're going to write HA, another colon. We're going to write the parameter. And then it's going to depend. You're either going to have a greater than, you're either going to have a less than, or you're either going to have a not equal to a number. So it's going to be one of these three. Okay. Now, I'm going to write a couple things here next to it. Um, right now, it may not make any sense, but it'll be useful when we start doing some problems. So this one, I'm going to write it in parentheses. Whenever you see something that's greater than, we're going to call this right-sided or right-tailed. Sometimes instead of sided, you might see right-tailed. The, if you have a less than, it's going to be a left-sided or tailed, a left-tailed. And if you see a not equal to, it's going to be, oops, two-sided. Or you can also call it two-tailed. Okay, so right now you might be wondering, what do you mean by that? It's okay, that will make sense when we do a problem. So. So this is basically um, the null and the alternative hypothesis. So that's basically what you start with. That's our initial thing. Okay, we we believe that it'll be uh, equal to 0.5. This is our belief. So all, an alternative, for example, will say, no, I do not think that. I think that P is not going to be equal to 0.5. Okay, that's what I think. Or you can say an alternative would be, no, I think that the proportion of red cards is going to be greater than 0.5. Or I can say that the proportion of red cards is going to be less than 0.5. Okay, so these are three different alternatives. Okay, how do you know which one to choose? Usually the problem is going gonna, is gonna to tell you. Okay, so how do I know if it's not equal to? Well, it's going to tell you either some of the keywords would be like not equal to. They will literally say not equal to. They will say different, okay, something very vague. If it's greater than, it'll literally say greater than. Or it will say increased. If it's less than, it will literally say less than or decreased. Okay, so that's kind of how you want to wanna know whether um, something is going to be greater than or less than or or not equal to. Okay, so let's just do a quick example of just setting up the null and the alternative hypotheses. Down this question, so it is believed that 40% of children use a nightlight before going to bed. Uh, we randomly select 30 children to determine if the proportion, the proportion has decreased. Okay, so what we want to do here is you want to uh, write out the null and alternative. Okay, so that's what we want to be able to do. So um, the first thing that you kind of want to be able to set up, you want to set out your HO and you also want to set up your HA. And remember that your HO and your HA in this case is going to have the parameter and then something following it. In this case our parameter is proportion, so the keyword here is proportion. Uh, we're going to be doing means later on, but right now we're just going to stick with proportion. So you're going to have P. Um, now, what we believe in the very beginning is that 
of children use a nightlight, okay? So uh, remember that your null hypothesis is always going to have an equal sign, okay? So maybe I should write right here, always equals, at least in this class. It can be less than or greater than sometimes. Um, so um, this one's always going to have equals too. So we believe in the very beginning that this is equal to 0.4, okay? That's what we have. So what will be the alternative? Well, you need to look for the keywords in this case. Here, the keyword is decreased. So decrease means less than 0.4, okay? So we initially believe that uh, this is equal to 0.4. This is what, so you can kind of think about this as no difference, okay? Okay, it's still the same thing. Nothing has changed. This means it has changed. In this case, there's a change in it it actually has been decreasing, okay? So here's, um, so you always wanna look for the keywords, okay? So let's try another problem. 38% of US citizens are in favor in the raising of local taxes. So a hypothesis test is conducted uh, to test if the proportion is different than 38%, okay? So here uh, we wanna write down our null and alternative hypotheses. So let's write our HO. And let's write our HA. So remember, we're still looking for proportion. Proportion is a parameter of interest. So we're going to write P here. So notice that in this case, um, our claim is basically this. We're claiming that this hypothesis test, this is what the researcher wants to find out. A hypothesis test is conducted to test if the proportion is different than 38. Okay, so different means not equal to. So this is not equal to 0.38. So that means our HA should equal 0.38. Remember that our null hypothesis is always going to be an equal sign, and then the HA is always going to be a greater than, less than, or not equal to. And in this case, we are claiming, or we're trying to figure out, the researcher is trying to figure out whether this is different than 0.38. Okay? So all you really want to make sure is to look at the keywords. Everything's going to be in the keywords. The parameter is going to be there and also the proportion or the mean, which we will do later. So this is the basics of hypothesis testing. Uh, we're going to do a little of uh, a part two of, of hypothesis testing to kind of uh, do more, a little bit more definitions.